so important to keep a consistent draw engine going throughout the game. Um, you know, just keeping you filling your hand up to five. That's definitely unfortunate, though, not getting that bridge at turn one that is so important in the Pokemon TCG. Right. But sadly, like you said, he didn't get it, but a Cynthia's not too bad. It will refresh your hand for six. Yes, yeah, six new cards. He's definitely going to hope to find at least one more Ralts. Honestly, it is a little risky attaching this Fairy Energy to the Ralts. Um, Noel doesn't know what Michael Pramwat is playing yet, and if he plays DCE in his deck, all he needs to do is put a DCE on that Lele, and he can knock out this Ralts this turn if Noel does not find one. Right. Does not look like he found it, but I do think he has the Ultra Ball, yes. He does, so he can find one here, and that's certainly what he'll go for. He also has that Bridget in his hand, so he can get up a turn two Bridget. Definitely not ideal, but still is going to be a good way for him to get set up in this game. Sooner rather than later, Absolutely. always with Bridget. Absolutely, so Ultra Ball here. I'm, I'm, I would be very surprised if this got anything besides a Ralts here. Right. But it looks like he's checking all his oh, prizes. He Randy is Volpix. looking for that little Volpix technique. Like, right now. Yep. And th this actually, I now that I see this, it actually makes a lot of sense. He does have the Fairy Energy on Ralts. He can just retreat to the Vulpix. Um, he knows Michael likely has no way to knock out the Vulpix next turn. It'll be safe. And this secures the turn one, or excuse me, turn two beacon uh, from Noel. Right. Will help him set up profusely compared to not having it out and having that Ralts. Mm -hmm. He's checking his prizes right now. It looks like we do see he has at least one DCE there. Yep. Doesn't look like he was missing anything too exciting. Yeah, yeah Beacon, of course, uh, a, a, a no energy cost attack. You don't have to have any energy attached to Vulpix to use it. And you get to search your deck for two Pokemon and put them directly into your hand. Really great in these Stage 2 setup decks. I did notice, I think Noel did have to discard a Guzma with that Ultra Ball, which is definitely unfortunate. But we're going to pass it over to Pramalot's turn and see what he can do on his first turn here. Looks like he has two energy, a Guzma, DCE, not too much else. Yeah, I know. He's definitely probably looking for an Ultra Ball. Getting a Bridget would be great to discard those energies, but no, he's going to have to Cynthia he himself. Well. Ooh. Both of these players not getting that Bridget that we see being so crucial here in the Pokemon TCG. And uh, we'll have to see if Pramont off of this, like, he needs to find Zerua's, he needs to find Vulpix's if he wants to get set up and start attacking uh, for effective damage on the next turn. Mm -hmm. We do note here that he did attach that TCE to that Lele. That will help put ship damage onto that Vulpix. Yep. Yeah, he, I think he knows, like, I might as well try to do a little damage this turn, and he'll probably have to retreat this Lele next turn anyway with a DCE. So he's saying, might as well go ahead and attach it so I can try to get that, you know, movement next turn if I need it. Right. It looks like he did draw a Zerua off of that uh, Cynthia, so he'll at least have that option to get a Zorak in play, but I don't see a Vulpix in that hand. I do not either. And I don't see a way for him to get one. No, and looks like he will just go ahead and energy drive for 40 damage, and we'll go over to Noel's turn, and we know he has that Bridget, so if he wants to use that option, that's definitely something he could do. Right. He does evolve into Curlia, yep. and we do see that turn two Bridget. Yep. Like we said, definitely ideally want to get it on turn one, but it's not too bad here, especially since he'll be able to go Bridget directly into Beacon and find himself potentially an Octillery and maybe even one of those stage two Pokemon, either Gardevoir or Gallade. Mm -hmm. You have a bench full of routes now. Definitely what you want to see if you are the Gardevoir player. Um, looks like he doesn't have any sort of follow-up next turn, but like I said, he can just beacon here for the Octillery, and uh, looks like he's eyeing up the Gallade. We'll see if he gets for Gallade here or the Gardevoir. And I also really like this intelligent play from Noel, as opposed to attaching to the Curlia that he just evolved. He attaches an energy to the Ralts. That means if... Uh, Pramalot does get a Guzma plus DCE playoff. He can't take out both the energy and Noel's evolved Pokemon in the same right. time. Yep. So it looks like Noel did decide to get that Gardevoir GX. And the turn two Bridget there right off go. the bat from Michael Pramalot. Pramalot's just kind of following suit after Noel, playing a Cynthia after Noel does, playing a Bridget after Noel does. Just kind of uh, anything you can do, I can do better, it seems like, over mm -hmm. on Pramalot's side. He is eyeing up at least one Zoro right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Pramawat just went for a Beacon set-up play this turn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, since he does play Vulpix, he does get to do Beacon himself. So we'll see if that's what he decides to go for. And one thing about Pramawat's list, he does play the uh, baby Alolan Ninetales with that Luminous Barrier um, ability, which prevents all effects of attacks done to it by Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX. So that means that Gallade from Noel is going to be extremely important for right. him. Right. 
So we'll see if Premoat, he could take a knockout on Vulpix or retreat and beacon, but no, Premoat just says, I think my hand is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and just take this knockout here, go up on the prize lead on this turn. Shuts down Noel from uh, really trying to set up anymore. Sure. But he does have that Octillery in hand. We should see that dropping down soon. Yep, and I think he actually top-decked a Curlia, which is an excellent top-deck for Noel. He's going to be able to um, get a lot of evolutions in play this turn. And uh, this is definitely going to be a strong turn from Noel, I think. Definitely. There's that Curlia you did mention. He goes down to zero card hand with that Super Rod getting back to energy and in an Alolan Vulpix. Yeah, definitely good to put back those fairy energies. You want to have a access to a lot of them in your deck to use a Gardevoir GX's Secret Spring ability to just get those extra energy attachments every single turn, mm -hmm. which is what makes Gardevoir so powerful. And uh, Noel technically could get a knockout here on this Tapu Lele. He would need a lot of cards to do it, but he's going to be drawing five here with Octillery. Yep. He can still play a supporter this turn. Um, he can, you know, Secret Spring, Attach DCE, Choice Band, and I believe that would be enough. Would be interesting to see what he draws. It looks like there is a DCE in hand. Okay, so that's definitely the first step to the process. DCE, Choice Band, and Fairy Energy is going to be what Noel's looking for. Parallel, Parallel City. City, extremely strong here, forcing Paramawat to discard one of the Pokemon on his side of the field. He opted for the Zorua. Yep. Definitely doesn't, I think he's kind of valuing uh, getting out this baby Alolan Ninetales next turn. That's really all he's going to have to wall against this big Gardevoir GX. And a wow. Sycamore from Noel digging for that choice band. If he finds it, it will take two prizes and uh, take a really, really strong lead. Did he get it? I don't see it yet. I can't quite tell. I see an N max potion. I can't see the choice band yet, though. I feel like if he had it, he would have slammed it down immediately. Looks like he does find a rare candy, though, and a stage two Pokemon going to be Gallade. Gallade. Once, Gall uh, once again, that Gallade being pivotal in this matchup because of that Bolt pick, or, or uh, that Ninetales. Yes, the little Ninetales there, and of course, uh, just such a good consistency Pokemon as well when combined with Octillery. That Premonition ability letting you look at the top five cards of your deck once per turn and rearranging them in any order. Mm -hmm. Extremely strong, so Noel's going to be able to control his draws for the rest of the game, basically, with this Gallade Octillery deck. I know Noel has uh, played... Um, a more, you know, Gallade-focused Gallade Octillery deck in the past, yes. so he's a big fan of, of this combo for sure. He does love a good Gallade deck. Yes. It looks like he did, unfortunately, with this KO here. Um, you know, definitely missing that choice band is unfortunate. But, but that is a lot of damage. We have a enhanced hammer go down on that DCE, yep. removing it from the field. As well as a field blower, yep. getting rid of that parallel city. Saying you're not gonna, that parallel city is gonna uh, quit bugging me now, and we'll see. He's got double puzzle in hand, which double puzzle is such a strong combo. Of course, when you play two puzzle of time from your hand, you get to get any two cards back out of your discard pile. But um, there's like not a lot there that he wants to get back yet. Right. We do have the puzzle coming out. We get the DCE, and it's gonna look like the Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is smart. Normally you want to wait to retreat until after you've kind of interacted with your deck and finished, like, doing what you're going to do before you retreat and make your last action. But Pramwad here being extremely smart, going for that uh, retreat so that he can get the DCE back with those double puzzles in his hand and playing a Cynthia right away. After attaching that DCE to Vulpix, I certainly think he's going to try to find it that. looks like that Ninetales oh, is nine coming tails. out. Yep, that's definitely what he's going to be looking for. Looking for a Ninetales here or an Ultra Ball. He hasn't played any Ultra Balls yet, so he certainly has a lot of outs to find it here off of these six cards. So let's see it. Does he get it? it does... Oh, I look, uh, that is an Ultra Ball in his hand, so he does, he does pull it off. He's got a Water Energy as well, which I think he's fine discarding because he can use Aqua Patch later on, and also a Rangaroo from Ultra Prism hitting the discard pile. And there is the Luminous Barrier, Alolan Ninetales, coming yep. to the field with that ability you mentioned earlier. Yep, Noah with Gallade in play will be able to take a knockout on this, but he would have to find some combination of Floatstone or Fairy Energy to retreat this active Gardevoir and a double colorless energy in order to attack with Gallade. There goes the Aqua Patch, getting that water energy onto the bench. Yep, extra energy attachments always great for sure, and looks like we're just going to see a pass from Pramawat over to Noel. We'll see what he can do with this turn. I think Noel is certainly in the driver's seat this game. He does have a very strong start right now, but that 
roll of nine tails could definitely slow him down right Absolutely. now if he can't get that galleyed up. Yep. The Lele has hit the bench though, allowing him to get a looks like a Guzma's coming out. Certainly does, and actually, uh, funny enough, I think Pramwat did. Or, excuse me, Noel did 150 damage to that Tapu Lele, so. Um, Noel could actually use Guzma, and he could even attack with Curlia here. I believe Draining Kiss is Curlia's attack. It does 20 damage, and that would take a knockout on this Tapu Lele what? without risking a Stage 2 Pokemon. So that would be... We'll, we'll see what Noel does, but I think that would be pretty interesting. He, of course, could also just Energy Drive. That might be slightly better, but... We might as well go all, all out at this point. <laughs> He does have two fairy energies in his hand, so he could attack with Gallade, he could attack with Tapu Lele. Noel just has all kinds of options. He's using that Premonition ability here, kind of eyeing up what he's going to be able to draw with Abyssal Hand this turn, and what he's going to be able to top deck on his following turn. Really smart sequencing here from Noel, using that Tapu Lele to get Guzma, and then using Premonition so that his deck is randomized again, and now he can see five new cards compared to the cards that were on his deck from last turn. Right. Looks like he has decided on how his five will be placed going forward. It looks like he's debating on an energy placement. Yeah, I think he's just trying to figure out what he wants to attack with. He has a lot of options here. Um, it looks like it is going to be a attachment to the active and a Guzma. And he is going to bring up the Curlia here. Oh, but actually bringing up the Zerua. So I wonder if he, in these top five cards, I didn't notice what he saw, but he may have seen another stage two Pokemon he wants to attack with, or he might just retreat this Curlia and attack with Gardevoir. It looks like it's, that is exactly what he's doing. He knows having those Zoroarks out and being able to trade is not a fun time. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's super crucial to Pramawat's setup and his consistency. So by doing this, he takes all of his Zeruas out of play. No Zoroarks will hit the field this turn. And, I mean, it's turn four at this point, and Pramawat has not seen a Zoroark yet, which is, for these Zoroark decks, so, so crucial. Right. We do have another Cynthia played on Pramawat's side. Refreshing his hand to six. Mm -hmm. And if he can find a Water Energy, he can attack here with that Alolan Ninetales. Aurora Beam does 80 damage. Um, which isn't a lot of damage, but when you're immune to Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Not only that, it's only a one prizer. Absolutely. Uh, Noel has to do a lot of work to deal with this Pokemon. That's only going to net him one, uh, one prize. Right. So I actually don't think Pramwat hit a Water Energy, which is super unfortunate here. He has one Puzzle of Time, a Floatstone. He does have another Alolan Ninetales. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just going to be a pass over to Noel. This is not looking good for Pramwat. And Noel, I think, is still just left with so many options this turn. He has a Professor Sycamore. I don't know that he wants to play that. I think he has a lot of resources in his hand, and looks like it is just going to be an end. He does only get five cards off of this, um, but he's also, you know, putting Pram at five cards. It's not too, too bad. Not only that, if he starts playing cards, he can Abyssal Hand for more. Absolutely, and with that Premonition ability, of course, being able to pick whatever cards from the top of the deck he wants. Exactly. Not only that, his deck is getting very thin right now, mm -hmm. now that we're about mid-game. He yeah. does need to manage his resources. Absolutely. He's pulled a lot of his basic Pokemon out of the deck already. I think, um, you know, this Curlia has stuck around for a while now, but if he can find another Stage 2 and get three Stage 2 Pokemon in play, it's going to be really difficult for Pramwat to uh, do much with this game, I Definitely. think. Definitely. I don't see a stage two evolution yet. I'm not sure I even see an energy over there in Noel's hand. I did think I saw. Oh, there there it a is. Fairy. Yes. Yep. So he does have a, at least one attachment. He's going to premonition before attaching, which I think is smart. What you see in the top five cards could affect where you want to make this energy attachment. It looked like there was two Cynthia and a <laughs> Curlia in there. Yeah. So playing the three Curlia, a very thick evolution line. And I think if he could get that Curlia in play this turn, um, you know, he's guaranteeing himself basically that he can um, have the, the ability to potentially get three Stage 2 Pokemon in play next turn. Definitely. So we'll see what he decides to get here. We, we know he'll draw minimum one card after attaching an energy with the Abyssal Hand. So he'll, you know, probably put one card he wants to play now on top and then put a card that he wants to top deck next turn on top yes. again. So. Energy attachment to that lone route. 
the only non-evolved Pokemon on his side, yep. besides and, that Lele. Yep, and it's a very smart play from Noel, spreading his energy out, leaving himself with lots of different options so that Pramuat, um, you know, is really going to have a hard time dealing with everything here. So we do see a water energy. He didn't have it last turn, has it now after that in from Noel, and he'll be able to start attacking with this Alolan Ninetales. Other than that, what does Pramawat need to I, do right now? No supporter, Ooh. nothing coming out. Looks like it's just going to be an Aurora Beam for 80 damage. Um, slow start here, but, um, you know, Noel is forced to deal with this. He needs to find that double colorless energy so that he can take the knockout with Sensitive Blade. Right. So it looks like he's playing a Ultra Ball here. Going to just get a Gardevoir, and here it comes. We could see four Stage 2 Pokemon in play for Noel. And if Gardevoir ever gets three Gardevoir and a Gallade set up, it's very difficult for Gardevoir to lose that game, right. honestly. Um, something Noel, I guess, should be mindful of is if, sure, he can knock out this first Alolan Ninetales, but if Pramawat does respond and knock out the Gallade, um, Noel needs to make sure that he has the ability to get a Gallade back in play so that he can deal with Ninetales once again. So, right. I, like, even though he probably could get three Gardevoir in play this turn, I wouldn't be surprised to see him leave one of these Curlias in play to give himself the option to have Gallade if uh, Pramawat does have, like, another baby Ninetales like this. Right, that is definitely the safer play. Personally, I would go about that as well. Mm -hmm. Those Alolan Ninetales are quite tricky at times, honestly. Absolutely. We see a couple of rare candy in Noel's Premonition here. Uh, cards that are normally great in Gardevoir, but this game has been a little slower for Noel, and he's been fine with it because he's just been manually evolving all of these Pokemon. Abyssal Hand will get to draw him three here. Looks like it was a Max Potion Fairy Energy and a Field Blower, um, you know, leaving those two rare candies in the deck. He doesn't need to find those here. Opting so, to just... Pass. Yep, did not find the double colorless energy, so just a pass. You know, for all I know, he could have also announced infinite force, but it doesn't do any damage. Exactly. Because, yeah. <laughs> so over on Pramwat's side, I think... Uh, did draw ooh, the Guzma. Guzma is big here. Gonna just try to get some damage off on to this Gallade. Floatstone coming onto the Lele. He can move this now. If he can get another Alolan Ninetales this turn and, um, you know, take a knockout with the you know, big Alolan Ninetales, that would take this Gallade out of play, but it looks like he doesn't have that option in his hand. Right. So this is smart here. Sure, you're not taking the knockout, but you're putting pressure on this Gallade. You're at least hitting it, and um, that makes it a lot easier for you to knock out in the next turn. And if Noel doesn't find a double color synergy this turn, uh, Alolan Ninetales will knock out this Gallade with only 150 HP. Right, he does look like he is premonitioning right now, looking for anything to help him out. Yeah, he did find a couple of supporters, but I'm not sure that he has cards in his hand that he's able to play down so that he can draw with Abyssal Hand. And if he doesn't have a supporter just in his hand, um, it may be tough. He may have to go for a weird play where he, like, max potions that Gardevoir that has two energy on it and max potions the active Gallade to mm -hmm. draw cards. But even still, that might leave him with five cards, and it might be kind of tough to get what he needs this turn. Yeah, no basic fairy. He might, I think he does have one in his hand. So what we might see is double max potion, uh, secret spring attaching. Looks like, exactly. Yep, secret spring attaching to the active Gallade. Abyssal hand will draw him the supporter he needs. And then he's really going to just need to draw an energy off of the supporter he plays for turn. So Abyssal hand here does find the Cynthia he put there. Super odd will put back fairy energies, just increasing the odds that he can find one this turn. Right. Three fairy energy yep. right back in. And then a Cynthia and then to the follow Cynthia. But not before a field blower. Yep. Thinning out as many cards as possible. Like I said, just maximizing those odds. Pokemon, I think, you know, becomes a game of odds at times. You just want to do what you can to increase your chances as much as possible. And we see Noel, very smart play here, doing exactly that. Definitely. Here we go, cut in the deck. And let's see if he grabs... At least at one energy out of this. Six. All he needs, double colorless or fairy energy, will suffice. I uh, do see do the see fairy it. energy, so he can use sensitive blade. Does 60 damage plus 70 more damage if your opponent played a supporter during the last turn, and uh, or if you excuse me, if you played a supporter this turn, doing yeah. 130 damage, which is enough to knock out this Alolan Ninetales. The pesky little bugger, go into the <laughs> discard, bringing that very damaged Lele up, though. Yep. Looks like Pramwatch is going to attach a DCE here and go for a Cynthia. That's been 
really the only supporter Pramwat has played this game. Lots of Cynthia's. He did Bridget that one turn, but every other turn, it's basically been Cynthia for Pram. Right. And honestly, at this point, if I'm Pramwat, I'm staring down a really, really menacing field. I'm not sure if Pramwat... Pramwat could be digging here for... Um, you know, like, uh, Rescue Stretcher, Super Odd. He definitely needs to get that Ninetales back. I'm not sure what kind of recovery cards he does play, but he wants to find it. Um, he does get, excuse me, does get an Aqua Patch, so he can get one more energy on that Ninetales, but I don't think he wants to do that until not he has yeah. something with a little more HP on the bench. There is a big Alola Ninetales GX, it looked like. Yep. So he could uh, even Aqua Patch into the Ninetales and get a Knockout here this turn. Uh, doing 150 damage, I believe, would be enough to knock out, or 160 damage uh, would knock out the uh, Gallade with 150 HP. And discard two energy, making it difficult for Noel's Gardevoir to, um, you know, really respond. But with two Gardevoir in play, Secret Springs can definitely stack up very, very quickly. I honestly think this might be what Pramawat has to do to yes. stay in this game. Here comes our Alola Ninetales GX. The retreat. Yep, and looks like we will just see uh, that. I believe it is Ice Blade doing 160 damage or 150 damage. Either way, it is enough to it's knock enough out Galley. Enough to knock it yep. out. And uh, with just one energy on that Alola Ninetales, Noel needs a lot of energy plus Choice Band, something like that, to get a knockout mm -hmm. on Ninetales. But with all these Gardevoirs in play, it's, it's certainly something he can pull off this turn. And there's a DC on the top. That'll certainly help to get him there. Of course, Infinite Force doing 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. Very easy to rack up damage and just use your opponent's energy cost against them. Right, but with that Alola Ninetales GX discarding, yeah. makes it a bit trickier. Alola Ninetales is definitely normally very good against Gardevoir GX since it does discard two of its energy in order to use its attack. But at this point, Noel does have lots of Gardevoirs in play, lots of options to find um, the cards he needs. And, you know, I think he should be able to get this knockout here, but we'll just have to see. It kind of comes down to counts. So some of these Gardevoir lists are cutting down on their numbers of choice bands, are cutting down on their fairy energy counts. So it's going to kind of come down to that, I think. Can Noel find what he needs here this turn? Right. He does have a Cynthia in hand, but he has played the Lele looking in his deck to see if there's a better option. Mm -hmm. There's not much left in his deck, though. Yeah, he certainly has thinned out his deck pretty well to this point. I think he does still have a lot of rare candies. He actually... I don't think he has played... I think he has played one rare candy this game. He rare candied that Gallade. Other than that, it's been all Curly Emanuel Evolution, so there's a chance those rare candies could clunk up his hand a little bit. It looks like he's just going to get an in out of yeah. the deck. Putting them both down to four cards. Yeah, I don't know that he'll play that necessarily. He might just be kind of trying to thin out his deck a little bit to maybe go for an Abyssal Hand, maybe. We'll just have to see what he does. We see the third Gardevoir come down. Yep. Which I think is fine at this point. Uh, like I said earlier, Noel wants to, you know, normally keep a Curlia or Routes in play so that he can get Gallade back into play if another Baby Ninetales comes out. But looking at Pram's side, he has two GX Pokemon in play. Noel has four prizes left, meaning that Noel uh, just needs to take knockouts on the two Pokemon on Pram's field. So Indeed. he can play around that Ninetales if it does come back into play. We end up with going with the Cynthia. That N was discarded off that Ultra Ball where he got nothing. Shuffling up to draw a fresh six off that very thin deck. Yep, he will need two fairy energies plus a choice band or three fairy energies to get the knockout here. So off of these six cards, we'll see if he can hit it or not. He hits There's at least one, one fairy energy at least. I'm not sure I see any more or a choice band. Looks like we're There's detecting two. Here. two fairy energies. Does he have the choice band in order to get this knockout here? He's playing his he cards does. down quickly. He does have the choice band that will get the knockout here on this Alolan Ninetales GX and this is a massive Gardevoir that is going to be... I, I don't think Pram is going to be able to respond to this. Don't think he will either. He's got that Lele with, uh, you know, 150 damage on it from earlier in the game. There's just not anything Pram's going to be able to do right. here, I don't think. Um, I think at this point, Pram is just kind of eyeing up what Noel has in his deck. Maybe, you know, realizing, okay, he's playing the Max Potion build. He's got the thick Curlia line. He, um, he hasn't seen a lot of rare candies, so maybe Pram doesn't even think Noel plays a lot of rare candies, um, but as we know, he definitely does. Yes, he just he didn't does. have to use them this game. Guzmoing up that Octillery to try and buy some time, bringing up his Alolan Vulpix. Yep. 
Yeah, Pram is an extremely smart player. He's one of the best in the game, as we said. Um, you know, he knows about the time limits of these tournaments. I think he's usually very good about conceding whenever the game is too far gone. But I think he must see some sort of win condition here. Noel has gotten rid of a lot of Guzmas. We know he discarded one earlier. He's played at least one, I believe. So, um, and he does see the other Alola Ninetales. So now we know Pram plays two Baby Ninetales because I don't right. believe he's played Super Hot yet. So just getting that beacon, getting those two Pokemon into hand. All Noel needs here is uh, energies to retreat uh, to take a knockout on this Ninetales. That would put him down to one prize. Or a Guzma would just win him the game here. Um, but like I said, I'm not sure that he has one left. Don't think he had one left at all. So Noel just kind of eyeing up the situation here, trying to figure out what he needs. He's also used a ton of energies here. Um... I believe he's only used two DCEs, so he should have enough to retreat this Octillery, worst case scenario. Um, but looks like Ultra Ball will just kind of thin some cards out, and looks like there's a DC in he his hand. He does have the DC in hand, he's just checking his last few cards there to make sure he has the resources he needs, just in case this goes an extra turn. But I do assume he is going to, yes, attach that DCE, retreat into the giant... Gardevoir. That is a massive Gardevoir. Such a threat. Uh, he's got more energies in his hand. He could Secret Spring, but no, choosing not to. Choosing to hold them. Pram going to send up this Lele, and um, yeah, I think this game is going to do it. Maybe Pram is hoping, you know, maybe Noel is out of ways to retreat. He's used a lot of energies. I don't think he has a Guzma left, so Pram does have a Lele in his hand. He could go Lele for that Guzma, bring up this Octillery, and maybe try to, um, you know, see if Noel doesn't have a way to move it. Right. Could be trying to win by deck out at this point. Yeah, Pram is, like I said, extremely smart player, always identifying all of his possible oh. win conditions. But no, that's going to do that it. That is it. Pram saying, I think that's it. I think his last Guzma, yep, it was in his prize card, mm -hmm. so he was not able to Guzma that Octillery. And um, looks like we're going to go to a game two with Noel winning that first game pretty convincingly, if you ask me. Right. What does Michael Pramowat need to do right now in order to come back? You know, I think his setup was just extremely bad compared to what he uh, really needs to do. He never got a Zoark in play, and Zoark's trade ability is just so, so powerful and um, so good in the Pokemon trading card game that once he gets those set up, he gets that consistency that he needs, um, but he just never had that option this game. Definitely that early Parallel City really yep. messed with him. Early Parallel City forced him to either discard a uh, Ninetales, excuse me, a Vulpix or the Zerua. Chose to discard a uh, Zerua. Looking back at it, I wonder if he's wishing, man, maybe I should have discarded a Vulpix. But I think at that point he was worried about a Guzma play potentially from Noel taking out his only Ninetales. And he does know how important that... Um, Excuse me, taking out his only Vulpix, and he does know how important that Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier is. Right, especially in this matchup when your <laughs> main beefy boy is a Gardevoir. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, Noel, if you're Noel, I think you're feeling very good about that game. Definitely. He just took down one of the game's greats in round one of the Toronto TCG Regional Championships. And, uh, you know, another big disadvantage for Pram last game was that he went second. Going first in the Pokemon TCG is just so, so good. You get that extra turn of supporters. You get that extra turn to just, you know, you get to evolve first. Sure, you don't uh, get to attack on your first turn, but... At that just point, like... With these evolution decks, it's yeah. so important to be able to evolve quickly. We do have a mulligan. Yep. So, Noel will be able to draw one extra card should he choose, which is also a great advantage in this game. Absolutely. We did, no, both of these players did miss Bridget on their first turn last game. Bridget, of course, letting the players search their deck for up to three basic non-EX Pokemon or one EX Pokemon and putting them directly right. onto the bench. Um, such a strong card in these evolution setup decks, and we do see a basic over on Pram's side. We do. He does have a handful of supporters, it looks like, as well, but I did not see the coveted Natural Bridget, sadly. Yes, unfortunately, doesn't look like he had it. We'll see. Maybe he can get uh, pull a Tord Reklev here and just top deck it if he needs it. Ooh, we're starting Ooh. with an Oranguru. Looks like he chose to start the Oranguru. He did have that Zerua in his hand. Chose to send up a Oranguru, though. I think just looking at his hand, knowing he wasn't going to Bridget, um, he wanted to send this Oranguru up because he doesn't want to lose his potentially right. only Zerua quickly. So very smart play from Pram Alive. Seeing that turn one Cynthia just hurts me so much right now. I think it's Pram's favorite supporter at this <laughs> point. It's all he has basically played this entire set. Um, a couple of Guzmas here in their last game. You know, that one Bridget on that one turn, but ultimately ended up not mattering. Cynthia's been, uh, unfortunately for Pramwat, his supporter of choice. Right. 
So it looks like he does have an Ultra Ball. He could get another basic in play, but he actually just pass. choosing not to, wanting to hold that Ultra Ball potentially for a Zoark next turn. Going over to Noel's side, we have the Lone Remoraid, sadly. Yep, I can't quite see his hand yet. I'm not sure if he has a Bridget yet. Yeah, all I can see is the DC, sadly, yep. and that's not much help at this point. Yeah, he could go for a uh, Ion Pool with Rimmeraid, discards a Stadium in play, but I don't think he's... Oh, as Ooh. we get Rimmeraid pulled up on the stream... A giant Rimmeraid has yes. appeared. And a, a Cynthia. But they turn one Cynthia again. Goodness gracious, do they even play Bridget? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what is happening here on the stream? Both of these players just playing so many Cynthias these games. Um, and... Noel needs to find a Ralts here, honestly. Right. Um, I think he would be fine finding just a Vulpix as well, but like... Literally you know, anything we'll, t we'll take at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Because Pram could even attach a DCE to the active Oranguru and use Oranguru's uh, second attack. Does 60 damage for three colorless, and that would take the knockout on Rimmeraid. A timer ball coming out from Noel. Ooh. We see one flip, two flips... Yep. Looks like it was oh, double tails, and we're just going to wow. see a concession from Noel <laughs> saying, I am not going to win this game. We're going to go to a game three, three. and we're going to see. That was unexpected. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> After just such a dominating game from Noel, game one, um... Just a concession immediately after the, the double tails on Timer Ball, I think, there. But that happens in Pokemon. We've seen it many times before. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, these first-turn wins, or donks as we call them in the Pokemon TCG, can happen from time to time. No one likes to see that happen, but um, it kind of goes back to the deck-building process, which is one of the great skills of the Pokemon TCG. How consistent do you build your deck? Do you have yourself a lot of outs? And both of these players do, but I think this just goes to show, even no matter how consistent you build your deck from time to time, you can still brick like that. Right, and while donks do happen, it's not nearly as bad as years past where there were just donks after donks after donks oh, in yeah. games. Yeah, in years past, I know you, you could attack on the first turn, oh, yes. so it's just sometimes your opponent wouldn't even get a turn. And that's a good old Latios uh, Fast Raid. Fast Raid, yep, Ooh. absolutely. Or, uh, or Pla turn one Plas Night Watch. Yeah, Plasma Curum even coming out and doing a big, Ooh, uh, big yes. attack there with a bunch of Deoxys in play. It definitely... Uh, uh, and many executes have been donked through the years as well, I'm sure, so... Oh, definitely. It was a Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead into this Game 3, and, um, you know, there should be plenty of time here since that... Uh, Noel did concede that one very, very quickly, and he will get to go first here. I'm taking it. Yep, there we go. Another mulligan. Looks like... Looks like Pram is having to do uh, another mulligan, shuffle his hand back in, and uh, does need to find a basic Pokémon to start the game. But Noelle. just like that last game, Noel uh, didn't have much luck with that mulligan draw. He did not. No, normally getting an extra card is extremely good. Helps you, uh, you know, get, you know, anytime you see more cards in the Pokemon TCG, it's great, right? It helps exactly. you find what you need. Um, and it just didn't help Noel last turn, or last game, excuse me. Yes. So he, he does end up getting that Alolan Vulpix. Perfect start for him. Ooh, we do see that Remoraid again. He takes his extra card, praying to find literally anything at this point, I yes, think. Yes, yeah, we'll see if he can get the turn one, Bridget. We haven't seen one yet this uh, set. I can't tell. I think that might be a Bridget at the end of his hand, but I can't tell. I, I think he would have played it by now. I feel yeah. like he would have just slammed it down at this point if it's a natural Bridget. It oh, there it is! Natural Bridget. <laughs> he was slow rolling us a little bit, it looks like. Just kind of mulling over his options, I guess, trying to figure out, you know, what is his follow-up going to be the next turn. Right. And so I have a, a hunch here. Yes. We might be seeing some routes. I, I think we will see a few routes coming to play, uh, potentially even in Alolan Vulpix as well. That beacon yep. attack, like we said, just so, so powerful for these evolution And he evolution does decks. have the energy in hand to retreat into that Alolan Vulpix. Yep. And speaking of Alolan Vulpix, Pramot actually started it over on his side, which is Impressive. potentially one of the best starters in the Pokemon TCG when you're going second. Because right. you can attack on your first turn if you're going second. So just having it in the active spot means he's going to get a beacon next turn. Exactly. Alolan Vulpix on that turn two is so good. And we do see that Bridget does grab two Ralts and a Alolan Vulpix. We'll see if he does attach and retreat this turn. I yeah. think that we will most likely be seeing that, um, but we'll just have to see what he does after shuffling up here. Pram's going to cut. We see the three hit the bench. It looks like he the will go ahead and... attachment into the Alolan Vulpix. Absolutely. And a pass on over. We'd see the natural Bridget on this side as well. Yes, absolutely. The top deck from Pramawat getting exactly what he needed there. 
And, uh, yeah, I think uh, his hand was actually not very good previous to that. Um, he does have a Zerua. He has a Water Energy as well. He does have the Bridget, though. I don't know that he has much of a follow-up next turn no. after this Bridget, though, unfortunately. There was just a Guzma, I think. But luckily, he can, with Beacon, find something like a Tapu Lele GX or even uh, Zoarks themselves to start trading, to start getting more set up. Here we go with the 2-2 two -two, uh, Vulpix Zoroark line. Yep, going to the bench. Pramawat actually decided here to get uh, two Vulpix with that Bridget, as opposed to maybe going for a heavier setup option with three Zeruas in play. Um, and I think this is, you know, kind of smart. He wants to get those Vulpix out as quickly as possible because he knows right. how crucial that Ninetales is to winning this game. Right. We see him mulling over some options here. The possibility of one Zoroark, one Ninetales, possibility of two Ninetales here. He does, like you said, those Z Ninetales are pivotal in this matchup. Looks like he is just going to opt for two Zoroarks. I think he knows that his hand is pretty weak and he's just going to need to draw cards next turn. He did attach the energy to the active um, Vulpix, which tells me he's want going to want to try to get that Aurora Beam next turn. Um, so I'm kind of surprised he didn't get to the Ninetales, but like I said, I think he just knows he's going to need to draw cards. Right, and he can always get it off those two trades. Absolutely. So over to Noel's turn. It looks like he does find the Octillery. We'll see if he has... Ooh, a rare Ooh. candy into Gardevoir. That is a solid turn, too. We know he has a double colorless energy, it looks like, in his hand as well. He may not want to attach it, though, because at this point he does know that Pramawat does play Enhanced Hammer. But right, no. but he goes for it. And he, I think it's fine. Sorry. We only saw one Enhanced Hammer played last round, so I have a feeling he only plays one. That's right. And I think it's fine as well to go ahead and just put it in play because it kind of forces Pramawat's hand, right? He either plays it and gets rid of the energy, or Noel gets to keep the energy in play, right? So right. You, can't, you can't just, like always play fearful of uh, Enhanced Hammer. Sometimes you just need to get your energy attachments and keep uh, keep getting attachments in play. Exactly. Right now that Gardevoir is not doing much on the bench. It's fine for now. Absolutely. But that Alolan Vulpix that's up, it's going to beacon. We're going to see two Pokemon come out mm -hmm. after the attacks. Yep. After the Cynthia here, we'll see if he can find another Ralts. I think that's what he'll most likely be looking for. I do think I see an Ultra Ball, so he can find one if he wants. Uh, let's see what two resources he has to discard to do it, though. There's a Guzma in hand. But I don't think he'd want to get rid of that right now. He's eyeing up a Field Blower. Which I think is fine. I think the only tools like on Pramawat's side Ooh. are going to be... It looks like he has to discard a DCE. DCE. Ooh. That's unfortunate. That tells me that the other cards in his hand are very good, things he definitely didn't want to get rid of. Right. He's definitely valuing getting more Ralts in play. Definitely. And that Guzma's pivotal later on in game when there's going to be that barrier up. Absolutely. Want to be able to get around that luminous barrier um, is, is going to be something he wants to do for sure. Actually opting to get a Curlia here as opposed to Ralts. Interesting choice, but I think he wants to go for having two Gardevoir out right away. Putting that pressure on Pramawat since he has just a bunch of basics. A little more aggressive of a play here, but he can Abyssal Hand. And you know what? There is a higher odds that he draws a Ralts off of the Abyssal Hand than him drawing a, a Curlia, potentially. So oh, we'll looks, just see the Beacon. Beacon will come out. We'll probably grab him. One of those Stage 2 Pokemon, I think it looks like it's going to be a Tapu Lele and probably... The Gallade! Gallade, yes. Going to need some sort of way to deal with that uh, a Ninetales over on Pram's side. If it oh, I'm just throwing down those Zoroarks, knowing that he needs to start trading right away. Yeah, I think Pramont is uh, very, you know, conscious of the clock here and wanting to, you know, make sure that there's enough time to finish this game if he's going to be able to win it. There's mm. the Enhanced Hammer yeah. off that second trade. He doesn't have the Ninetales yet, though. He needs Ninetales plus double colorless energy. Here comes an Aqua Patch. Going to get that extra energy attachment this turn. Enhanced Hammer, Hammer discards the DCE. I think knowing that Noel had to discard that, going, we can get two DCEs in that discard pile. Absolutely. Solid idea. Absolutely. And we do just see, um, once again, his favorite supporter this set, <laughs> Cynthia. Good old Cynthia. Shuffle and draw six new cards. Such a great consistency card. Um, in these decks, and he's definitely fine playing it at this point in the game, right? It was right. just unfortunate when he had uh, not been able to bridge it and all that. So six cards here. We'll see if he can find the Ninetales and a DCE. I do see an Ultra Ball for Ninetales, but 
There's no DC, sadly. No double colorless. He does, on the other hand, have a field blower, a puzzle, and not really anything else that can help on that, sadly. Mm -hmm. And he has already used those two trades this turn, so no extra cards here. Looks like both of those Ninetales were at the bottom of the deck, so uh -oh. right there hanging out with each other in the deck, it looks like. Grabbing the one. Yep, going to go ahead and put it in play. And, uh, you know, Noel, in order to, you know, take a knockout on this this turn he would need a lot he would need secret spring or floatstone to move the active i'm not sure that he plays floatstone we didn't see any last game i don't think on noel's side um, plus a double colorless energy and a galade which we know he has the galade but we also know he's down two double colorless energy right so just a pass from Pramawat. with the third dce in hand yeah, for I noel looks like noel does have that option potentially if he has a fairy he can um, retreat this active, and a, if he plays a supporter, he can use Sensitive Blade and take a knockout here this turn on the Ninetales and uh, really just get rid of one of these threats from Pramawat. Opting to look through uh, Michael's discard, seeing what's there, counting up everything. He does have a Guzma in hand, and he could, like, Guzma and take a knockout on one of these Zoarks with Gallade, which I don't think would be terrible. Definitely um, not. Taking Zoarks out of play worked out very well for Noel in game one, so I think he's, you know, definitely mindful of that and may want to go for that strategy once again. I think it's a very solid option right now. Being able to hit for weakness on top of getting rid of something that you can trade Pokemon away, it really just shuts down Pramawat's engine. Absolutely. And I think Pramawat would actually need a lot to respond with a one-hit KO on the um, Gallade. He would need... You know, an Aqua Patch plus an Energy Attachment plus an Alolan Ninetales GX. Right. And a way to retreat his active, which I guess he could do with the Ninetales in the active spot now, mm -hmm. but uh, doesn't want to have to discard too many energy if he doesn't have to. Interesting enough, we see him only bring up the Baby Vulpix with that Guzma and not going for one of those Zoroarks. Yeah, that is an interesting decision, but he's targeting down this energy, so I can understand his thought process here, and it doesn't seem too bad to me. Um, wants to get, you know, he knows Pram at this point does play two of these, you know, baby nine tails that he'll have to deal with. So just getting the nine, uh, excuse me, the Vulpix out of play means that's one less nine tails he has to deal with. Trading away that water for looks like a solid hand there. The yeah. DCE does find the DCE, which will allow him to use Aurora Beam here this turn. Double Puzzle of Time as well on Pramawat's side of the field can get enhanced Ooh. hammer. Going to be really good here. Getting rid of uh, Noel's third DCE. It's not good. Yeah, and Noel, uh, you know, he can, you know, attach two fairies next turn using the Secret Spring ability on Gardevoir GX. So that can still be an option for him to get a knockout on this active. Um, but Pramot's forcing him to find it here, right? Right. So we see the Enhanced Hammer. Cynthia good coming Cynthia. out once again. Going to see him uh, six new cards here. And I think at this point... Maybe just wanting to bench another Zerua, maybe could find an Alolan Ninetales GX on the bench, or his other baby Ninetales to evolve the one Vulpix that is uh, able to evolve this turn. Right. He does have a lot of options here. Let's see what he can get. This looks like the six cards come out. We'll see this hand. I see a couple of ends. Another Cynthia, a Guzma, Zoark GX. No other basics, though. And we'll just see the Aurora Beam 480. Right. Noel checking out what he has in his discard, reminding himself, oh no, there are three DC in the discard. Noel is definitely a little sad right now, but he does have a max potion in his hand, which will just totally erase that damage that Pram did last turn. And, uh, you know, Max Potion is such a powerful card, but it is a very costly card. You have to discard all the energy attached to your Pokemon. But since Pramalot played that Enhanced Hammer, Noel doesn't have any energy that he has right. to discard, so... It's free healing at this point. Free healing, absolutely. Looks like we just saw the Lele for the Bridget, just yep. kind of thinning his deck out at this point. So there's that Max Potion healing off all that damage. Now something here, um, you know, Bridget's... Okay, I was going to say, Bridget, you know, might not be the best option, but if he has the energy he needs, he could even just Bridget a Ralts, and that would provide him the supporter he needs for the turn to take the knockout, but no, he didn't have the energy, he's going to stick more here and try right. to hit those cards. Do you see a rare candy in his hand? He needs either his last double colorless energy or two fairy energies in order to knock out the Ninetales this turn. Right. And Don't. I did not, I see one energy in the back, it looks like. 
that he, he just put out. He's laying some cards down, though, so I think he should be able to thin his hand down a little bit to potentially go for Abyssal Hand. There's the Premonition. We do see two Fairy as well as that DCE. He does have that option, um, but interestingly enough, he has the cards set out like he's going to use an Ultra Ball or something, but if he plays those cards to try to thin his hand down, He'll shuffle his deck, and these cards won't be back right. in the order. So those must just be other cards that he can put in play this turn, as opposed mm -hmm. to an Ultra Ball. Just really kind of trying to figure out here what the order is he wants to put these things in. Interesting. Was the DC on the bottom? I think so. Um, I think that's what he put on the top. Okay, the top. Yeah. So he's going to Parallel City, reduce his bench to three. He has to discard something. Looks like, uh, yeah, just probably going to be that Tapu Lele. Seems like the best choice at this point. Right. It's just a free two prizes at this point. Field Blower, Field Blower away his Parallel City. He just wants to draw the, uh, you know, thin down his hand so that he can draw with Abyssal Hand here. Right. Attaching that energy to that Gardevoir. Yep, using Secret Spring and Abyssal Hand for one will find that DCE that he needs. Mm -hmm. And Sensitive Blade takes the knockout. Uh, just getting rid of that Nine Tails in play for Pramalot. <laughs> Pramalot really mulling over his options here. What does he want to send up? What is this next turn going to look like for him? Like I said, um, he's at a point now that it'll be... I don't know that he can respond to this Gallade this turn. Mm -hmm. He would need, like, double Aqua Patch plus Floatstone plus another Energy. Like, he just needs a lot of cards to pull it off. But oh. with Zorark GX in play... Certainly something that could happen. And at Cynthia in hand. I'm pretty sure he has one. <laughs> yeah, I think he does indeed. He'll be able to see lots of cards this turn. We'll see if he's able to do it and able to get that response. Mm -hmm. And if he is, honestly, Noel has just the one Gardevoir GX in play. Um, so he only has the one attacker set up if this Gallade does get dealt with. So we did just hear time called in the hall, but these players are on a different schedule, guys. So if you heard that, don't worry. These guys do have more time still. Here's the draw. Ooh, I do see two Aqua Patch, I think, in his hand, plus a Floatstone and an Ultra Ball. There's another one, so he... Sh I think he might have it. I do believe I see two Aqua Patch. I can't quite tell. I definitely see one at least, though. Looks like the second trade coming out. There it is. If he didn't have it before, he definitely has it now. Ultra Ball can get rid of two cards. Find him the Alolan Ninetales GX that he needs. Floatstone will move the active Vulpix, and Double Aqua Patch will get two Water Energies in play, uh, letting Ninetales get a knockout here on Gallic. Right. What a comeback. Absolutely. A super powerful turn from Pramwat, hitting all the cards he needs to pull off this combo. Um, oh, actually, maybe eyeing up the baby Ninetales. I don't... Does he not have an Alolan Ninetales GX in his deck, actually? Uh-oh. Maybe there is... Have we is, spoke too soon? Have we spoken too soon? It looks like he didn't have any Alolan Whoa. Ninetales GX in his deck. He must have prized multiple because that is very, very unfortunate. Um, I think one may have hit the discard on an Ultra Ball earlier on in the game. I can't quite remember, but... Right. We'll just see the two Baby Ninetales come out. Oh, he actually plays three Baby Ninetales, it looks like. I think it's a 3-2? Maybe a 3-2 split. Maybe he does only play one Alolan Ninetales, and I just didn't realize it. Excuse me, Alolan Ninetales GX. Um, but we will just see the Aurora Beam 480 damage. Ooh, such a shame. You, you hyped me up so much on this. I am so sorry. It looks like he didn't have access to it. He hit the cards he needed, but he just didn't have the card in the deck that he needed, the right. last card he needed. We see a timer ball. He does get heads for one at least. Heads like, for two. Makes up for that double tails in the last game, if you ask me. Right. Searching his deck for two Pokemon. At Unsure what he gets here. Yeah, I think, you know, he can't, you know, put anything in play. He doesn't play an evolution for anything he hasn't. Like, he doesn't play right. any Nine Tails cards, so he can't evolve the Vulpix. It looks like he actually just chose to fail it. I think he was just trying to thin the timer ball out of his hand so he didn't hit it again off of this end. <coughs> we have the end coming down. Putting Noel at four and probably at five cards. Yeah, Noel's 
<clears throat> getting less cards here, but he does still have that Premonition plus right. Octillery engine set up, so he'll be able to have his pick of the top five cards of his deck the, uh, after this end. All right, so we have just been notified. It is a time has been called for these players. Noel will be turn zero, and uh, Pramowat will be turn number one. Noel will turn two, and Pram turn three. And in order to win this set, Noel has to take four prizes. He can't do it because he played the Cynthia last turn. He won't be able to like Guzma and take out a knockout on a Zorak. So it looks like. It's actually, unfortunately, going to be a tie here in round number one. Such a shame. Pramawat showing his prizes there. Oh. Double DC in the prizes. The Lonely Ninetales yeah. was in the prizes, it looks like. Uh, these guys just kind of recapping the game here at this point. And, man, what a game for round number one. Um, really great that we got to see this on stream. Unfortunate right. it ended in a tie, but, um, you know, really, really solid game right. for sure. Definitely. So um, we'll see if we can maybe get a winner's interview. Too bad we didn't oh, have yeah, a winner. That's no, right. No. Yeah, I apologize. We're so fine. no, no We're just interview come for back this one. Uh, round two. Yep. So we will Hopefully take a short break, guys, and we'll be back very soon for round number two here at the Toronto TCG Regional Championship. Yep.